Matthew chapter 9, from 35 through to verse 38. And I don't know if you're able to stand. If you can, uh, you stand and let's read that together. Make me from out of home. Let's read the Bible together. I, I believe the Bible should be read in church. Amen? Amen. 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 So from verse 35 to verse 38, let's all read it together and please read it loud and as much uh, unison together. From verse 35, the Bible says, And Jesus went about all the cities and villages and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion on them because they came together and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous. But the laborers are few. Pray therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers. Brother Moore, would you please pray for us? so much. You may be seated. I just want to take just part of that verse, use the text, the entire chapter, and preach on a topic that I need help with. Verse 36, but when he saw the multitude, the Bible said he was moved with what? Compassion. Compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep, having no shepherd. I'm going to speak for a few minutes on compassion. Compassion of Christ or our need for compassion. When that word compassion is used, even before I studied, by the way, on the outset, let me say that we, we need to have compassion, but still able to take a stand Amen. on what is right. Amen. Amen. I want this to be in our minds and our hearts that we can have compassion, yet take a stand Amen. for what is right. But when the word compassion is used, a lot of us don't really understand, as used in context, how that word compassion is used. Some of us think it's weakness. when you think of compassion, to show compassion. Men especially are guilty of viewing compassion as something as being soft. As I study this, compassion Or the expression of the word compassion toward others reveals in Christ and in us strength of character that few of us possess. The word compassion, as used in the Bible, means to be moved inwardly. It means to move 
from within intensely with a feeling of mercy and pity and empathy it refers to the deepest possible feeling that mankind can have toward another person that phrase move with compassion literally means to be moved in the inner organs it has the idea of the modern phrase that we use <laughs> from the bottom of my heart sympathy is not necessary compassion but sympathy coupled with a desire to help is compassion pity feeling sorry for somebody without reaching out and ministering that person is not compassion but sympathy and pity coupled with a desire to help that person is compassion and, and, and I want us to keep in mind the context as we read from chapter 9 the Bible explicitly says that Jesus Christ went about the whole countryside helping people preaching the gospel healing people ministering to the spiritual and the physical needs and that's the context healing someone with an issue of blood from chapter from verse 18 calling out people into the ministry from verse number 9 seeing the need for the gospel to be preached and calling people out to doing it that's compassion from chapter verse 27 helping those who are blind and restoring the sight casting out evil spirits seeing their need and doing something about it is compassion and so he gets to from verse number 35 through verse number 38. You know, there needs to be in me that capacity to share feelings, to enter into the same feeling that that person is feeling. So compassion is sharing the feelings of others and possessing a desire to help them in their condition. When we read of the Gospels as we examine Christ in the Gospels, it tells of Jesus' great work going from village to village. Yea, even going into, the, into Samaria. The Bible said he must needs go into Samaria. And get in there and deal with the woman who's despised and looked down upon. That nobody wants to deal with. That's compassion. <laughs> We often see Christ looking at situations, but being, again, I want to emphasize that even before we get in that message, being moved deep within by the needs of others. I've got to admit, I don't know about you, but I need all the help I can get. Concerning the area of compassion in my life. 
Preacher, why you say that? You a pastor. I'm also a man. And I've found out, Sister Foster, too often, I'm selfish. Furthermore, too often I'm self-centered. Too often I think about myself. Too often I put my needs above everyone else, above everything else. Yet he became poor that I may become rich. We sing a chorus in St. Lucia, in the Caribbean. I want to be more like Jesus. And if there's an area, I don't know about you, you guys are perfect, you guys are full of compassion, and we'll see. But if there's an area I need help in my life, it's that area of real compassion toward people. It's easy to say to somebody, I'll pray for you. Here's the question, as you look at the text. How did Christ was able to minister to the needs of people like that? How come? Well, note the origins of Christ's compassion. It's a bit you, number one, that that originated in who he is. Amen. His essence. That Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, could reach out to all people. How in the world could he do that? Right. How in the world could Christ fix their problems? Help them with all their problems. What motivated him? Now keep in mind who he is. He's God in the flesh. This exposes me. Keep in mind he does not have a fallen nature. Amen. He's not selfish like I am. He's not self-centered like I am. Right. Jesus Christ transcends all faults. He transcends all failures. Right. Amen. He transcends all the faults that marks humanity. You know, as you read through the Old Testament... Many people come up with the idea that God is a mean God. That is, God is a God full of wrath without grace and mercy. That God is a harsh God. Yet Jesus, in the New Testament, reveals the exact nature of who God is. John chapter 1 verse 18 and John chapter 14 verse 9. Jesus Christ is the revelation of who God is. Amen. He's God in the flesh. In the New Testament we find that God is a holy God. Dealt with that in Sunday school. We find that a God is a consuming fire. In Hebrews chapter 12, 25 to 29. We find, yes, that God is a God of wrath in Romans chapter 2 and verse 5. Yet, we find that God is a God of love. John 3.16 right. For God so loved the world. We find in John chapter 1 verse 14 that God is a God of, full of grace. In Titus chapter 3 verse 5, he's a God full of mercy. 
Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15. He is a God full of compassion. That's my God. And the pictures that the world is painting that our God is a God of hammer, a God of wrath. Yes, he is, but in essence, he is a loving God. He's a God of mercy and he displayed that type of mercy. He displayed that type of love and compassion toward us. I'm thankful tonight that I serve a God full of compassion. He not just sees my needs, but he does something to help me in my time of need. In my time of desperation, you know, the story is told of a man who fell into a pit. He fell into a pit and could not get out of that pit. I think it is fitting for this message. He couldn't get out by himself. I want you to note the world's religion. A Christian science came and said, you only think that you are in the pit. Just think so. You're not really in the pit. <laughs> a Pharisee. Oh, we've got a lot of them today. Said only bad people fall into a pit. Be careful of the judgment of others. I'm preaching on that. A compassionate less fundamental said you deserve your pit. I want to stop first to think about how we react toward people. He's in the pit and all you can say you deserve it. You work for it. A charismatic said, just confess you are not in the pit. A Methodist came by and said, we brought you some food and clothing while you are in the pit. That's at least they're helping him. A Presbyterian said, this is no accident. You are here in the pit. There got to be a meaning for it. An optimist says, things can be worse. A pessimist says, things will get worse. But Jesus, seeing the man in the pit, took him by the hand and lifted him out of the pit. That's the difference in compassion. This is the essence of who God is. Amen. Full of compassion. That's, that's the spirit that I need in my life today. Amen. That's the spirit that you and I ought to operate from today in our church. Now, Note the origin. I'm, I'm thinking, yes, is in his essence. But I believe Jesus Christ growing up faced a lot of some of the stuff as God in the flesh. Jesus was able to experience a lot of the issues in life. His life at best was difficult. He grew up and died in abject poverty. When Jesus died, all that he had was just a garment on his back. And yet they gambled for it. Jesus Christ knew loneliness. 
Jesus Christ was despised and hated and rejected. Jesus Christ went through severe temptation. Jesus knew the feeling of pain. He knew what it was to be hurt deeply, betrayed by his own. He is able to enter into our feelings of hurt. He knows what it is to be betrayed and hurt. In part, that God-man can exhibit compassion because what he knew, what he experienced. And that's not part of the message, but I must say something here. When, when you and I go through stuff, Brother Ed, I don't know why I have this back issue. I mean, I'm doing my best serving God. I'm not perfect. One thing I do know, God knows. <sighs> and God is going to work for good in my life. Amen. And maybe it is not for me, but for somebody else. We don't know what God is doing in our lives. Second into the object of compassion. Jesus Christ, I'm going to give you the, the scripture verse and go through because there's some things I want to deal a little with. Jesus Christ feels compassion for the scattered ones. Matthew chapter 9 verse 36 and chapter 15 verse 32. Jesus Christ feels compassion for the sinners. I thank God for that. Mark chapter 5, 11 to 20. And chapter 6 in verse 7. Jesus Christ feels compassion for the sick ones. Matthew chapter 14, verse 14. Chapter 20, 30 to 34. Jesus Christ feels compassion for the suffering ones. Luke chapter 7, verse 13. Jesus Christ feels compassion for the seeking ones. Mark chapter 10, 17 to 22. Here's what gets me. Even if Jesus knew their faults and their failures, he did not let that get in his way to help them. He still showed compassion. He still reached out and helped them and did not allow his knowledge of what they're going to do with the help he's given them to stop him from reaching out to them. That's true compassion. Amen. Here's why I need help. Jesus Christ was never impatient with them. Or offended by their needs. You know, we, you and I see people's needs, and we probably reach out one time and help, but if they keep coming back. You, <laughs> but just think for a while. How many times we have to go to him asking him for help? Think for a while how many times we've failed. Nobody knows. Our husband, our wives, our children, our pastor, nobody knows, but we know. And yet we go to him, ask him to forgive, ask him to help us, to get us out of that pit. And yet every time, he reaches out to us in our deep pit, pull us out without ever rebuking us. <laughs> what a God. Amen. Again, as you preach, you, you find some things that goes along with the message. So I want to read another illustration. 
So the story is told of a, a man who found himself in a terrible condition, and I'll explain that to you. So he entered into a subway in New York. <laughs> the people were quiet, seated, disciplined in the car before he entered with his noisy children. The man sat down and closed his eyes as though he was not aware of his rowdy children in the car. The once quiet subway was now a place of disturbance, of chaos. The children's behavior was obvious to everyone except the dad. Finally, the dad was confronted about his children. Rightly so. The man opened his eyes, evaluated the situation as if he was unaware of what had happened. Oh, you're right, I guess. I should do something about it. Here's what he said. We just came from the hospital where their mother died about an hour ago. I didn't know what to think and how to behave, and I guess they don't know either. Brother, sister, we need to have empathy with people. Amen. We don't know what people are going through. Amen. I go into an office and I think people are mistreating me and I get upset. I'm driving down the road and somebody's taking their cool cool time on the road and I blow the horn. Get out of my way, brother. And I'm not going to use the word brother dog would use, big dog would use. I guess I'm the only guilty person here. I, I feel guilty. How I treat people. I feel giddy as a pastor sometimes how I react to people. They may not see it, but God sees it yeah. inwardly in my heart. That person is having problems upon problems, and they come to you, and they come to you, and they come to you, and you're praying, and you're praying, and sometimes they don't listen. But they're in trouble, and they come. Your daughter, your husband, your wife, your children your family, your neighbor, going through stuff sometimes that you have no idea. Compassion starts when we begin to understand and feel the hurts of others. Could I say that again? Compassion begins when we begin to understand and feel the hurt of others. When they brought that woman caught in adultery in the very act, he knelt down. He knew her. He knew everything. And he had compassion on her. No, not the objectives of compassion. <laughs> the objectives of compassion toward me and toward you, uh, number one, I find a brief look, and that, that's, that's where I have problems. And you realize I have a lot of problems. But the disciples, Brother Moore, his disciples, those he chose and spent most time with, 
and taught them over and over and over and showed them by his example. The disciples knew nothing of compassion. You know, Luke chapter 9. By the way, let's, let's just read that. That's, that's an amazing episode. Luke chapter 9. God is good. Luke chapter 9. Look at verse 54. Th that issue of compassion. By the way, folks, <laughs> verse 54 is the, is, is the verse I want to deal with. But you understand that, that, that Christ sent messengers out and and the, the, the gospel, brother Tony, was refused. People did not accept the gospel. Not the reaction of his loving, compassionate disciples. Look at verse 53. And they did not receive him because his face was though he would go to Jerusalem. Look at verse 54. And when his disciples... James and John, those who are part of the inner three, those, those who are really close, those who had intimate, I mean deeply intimate contact with Christ. I don't know where I stand here. I, brother, I'm, I'm a far off. They said, that's his disciples. Lord, will thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? Look at verse 55, but he turned and rebuked them and said, You know not what manner of spirit you are of. What a rebuke to me. that to spend all that time with him and, and see him have compassion with people and yet because they rejected him that he's going to command a curse upon them. Is not how we react. Because people reject us we ask God to beat them up. We ask God to curse them. Could I ask what type of spirit do we possess? That's not God's spirit. Are we okay? You and I can take a stand against what is wrong and yet have compassion on people. Amen, preacher. I mean, I mean it's, it, it's, I'm preaching that and I'm under conviction. Because I'm, I'm remembering how I react to my wife. To church members. Right. Oh, I am the man of God. I am the one. Really? Jesus rebuked those who were closest to him. Because the spirit they were showing was not the right spirit. I wonder how many times we have shown that same bad spirit. Call fire from heaven. Here's another illustration. <laughs> Compassion. Compassion. Seeing their need. And, and, and brother Maul, these are his disciples. That's what gets me. And some are the inner three. And if those had problems of compassion, how about us? But here's another illustration, and it's right in the text. Look, keep your fingers in Matthew, we'll get back there. But look at Mark. Mark chapter 6. God is good. Mark chapter 6. Let's read verse number 32. Let's read the Bible. Understand 
how we behave. God help me. The Bible says, and they departed, verse 32, Mark chapter 6, into a desert place by ship privately. And the people saw them departing, and many knew him. Watch this. And run afoot thither out of the city, all the cities. And onward them and came together unto him. They would not let him go. And Jesus, when he saw much people, was what? Move with compassion toward them because they were as sheep having a sheep not having a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. Look at verse 35. And when the day was now far spent, probably it's in the morning, and they spent the day with him and he's teaching them. His disciples came unto him. The closest that he had, those he were training, they came to him and said, this is a what? There's a place. And now the time is far past. Look at verse 36. Send them away that they may go in, into the country round about and in the villages and buy themselves bread. For we have nothing to eat. And he answered and said unto them, Give ye them to eat. Hmm. And they said unto him, Shall we go and buy two hundred penny worth of bread and give them to eat? Look up here. Over and over and over again, the disciples like us are displaying lack of compassion lack of empathy these people had been with the master whole day now keep in mind that same master been performing miracles all the time they know that they knew who he was he's the god of miracles he's the god who's able to do all things right. and yet in the flesh after the crowd had spent the whole day with them, with them, enjoying the teachings of Christ, dark was approaching. So they wanted to shift the responsibility back to the people. Send them away, Lord. We can't feed these people. We don't have the money to feed this. I, I imagine Judas. That's a lot of money. Right. Judas probably thinking, I have this plan for that, I have that plan for that, I have that plan for that with that money. Send them away, Lord. Christ said, No, you feed them. Master, you crazy? No compassion. No compassion. No compassion. When I look at that, they did not see the need of the crowd. They, they, the, the eyes couldn't see the need. They were happy for the crowd to follow them and follow Christ. They were happy that so many people were there, but yet... They would not want to leave a finger to help them. They couldn't see the needs. They were caught up. God help me with that one. They were caught up in their lives. They were caught up in their living. I'm not concerned about the crowd. They were caught up in their comfort. They were caught up in their zone. Let me rephrase that. Most times I'm caught up in my life. Right. In my zone, in my pain. Right. In my anguish. In, I'm caught up in my problems. I don't care about other people. Now, I'm not saying we shouldn't be, care we shouldn't be caring about ourselves. 
But we need to have compassion on other people. They were not concerned about the people. Yes, the people were there. They were there, but they were not concerned about them. If we had it on the day today, they would put the big crowd on Facebook <coughs> to draw attention to themselves. They had no thoughts of reaching outside of their circle Amen. and helping the people around them. It is sad. But so also it is today. We can see ourselves in the disciples. I can see myself in a disciple. In James and John. Again, too often we are self centered, too often we are selfish, too often we think. If it does not touch our lives, our families, our friends, then it's not our business. Right. Why are we this way? Why? Jesus had to teach his disciples about compassion. He used that illustration, all these, to teach his disciples and to teach us. That when you see somebody, you must look beyond the person. We need to be taught that lesson tonight. I need that lesson tonight. You know, compassion is against my nature. Humanly speaking, in my flesh, all I care about is me, myself, my protection, my security, my house, my family. That which does not touch me personally does not matter. That is why Jesus had to teach disciples. About compassion. That's why I need this message. That's why the church needs this message. It may be against our nature to be compassionate. But it's not against our new nature. You see when we got saved. We were given resources that we need. To feel the need and the burden of others. Right. Ephesians chapter 4, 32. Galatians chapter 5, 22 to 23. Could I ask you a question? <coughs> Emmanuel Baptist Church, you're doing good. A lot of things are happening here. I, I looked at Brother Aaron, his son, 14 years playing this. I go, wow. I, I follow you guys and hope you, I follow the service here when I'm home. When I heard about, for the first time, the announcement about the guy, I, I came unglued about the land. Because I've been praying about the ministry here. I came on glued. I mean, some of, I didn't hear much shouting, but I was shouting at home. Mm-hmm. I mean, God is working. Yes, amen. I, I made a note of, of the amount of young people in this place. That's a blessing. Amen. A lot of churches are dead. Amen. Don't think about you. Think about the needs of others. How involved are we in the ministry of showing compassion? And I know you're doing. And I thank God for that. I brag on this church, well, on the God of this church all the time. But Emmanuel can go to another level. 
What do you think your pastor is trying to do all the time? Take it to a level. People ask me, how's your church? How's ambassador? And I know some folks from ambassador might be watching. And I said, good, but my heart is that they go to the next level. How are you doing in your own life? I want to go to the next level. I'm not satisfied with where I'm at. And if there is one area that we need help in, it's that issue of compassion. Don't just see people and move away. Because God has placed in you that new nature and the fruit of the Spirit. When we get saved, we are capable of really showing true compassion to other people. Because we receive that new nature. We have that capacity to rise up just like the master beyond what they've done to us. Beyond the betrayal. Beyond the gossip. Beyond the evil they're doing to us. How will men know you, my disciple? How? If you love them that love you, what's the difference? If you greet those who greet you, what's the difference? What's the difference? The unsaved do the same thing. My prayer for me is that God would continue to develop that is why in spite of how I feel, I've got to go on. That is why the, the burden, the compassion for the Caribbean is there. Regardless what happens. May God move us. May God move our hearts to see people and see their need. And within our capacity to reach out and help, go to the next level. People know about this church. What a wonderful thing that it would be if the whole church would just come together and, I mean, go to the next level as far as compassion is concerned. If that, listen to me. I'm closing this. Let me ask you a question. Why you think that the multitude followed him? Why? Why? Everywhere he went, he had no chance. They were always following him because he's showing compassion. Right. If you and I show compassion, people will find us. We'll have a chance to tell him about our Jesus. Yeah. We show compassion to us. Yeah. Let's pray. This is different message. This message is that God is allowing me to preach is from the heart. His lessons he's teaching me in my own life that I've not gotten there myself still. I'm still. I need help. I need help to show true compassion to my wife for our church people to those around me. I don't know where you are. But may God touch you, touch your heart. He said, preacher, I need to have more compassion. I need to develop a more compassionate spirit to all those around me. Would you slip your hand? He said, preacher, would you pray for me? God bless you. Preacher, would you pray for me? What else? God bless you. Oh, God, help me. Father, thank you for your word. I need help there. Help me, Lord, to be more compassionate. 
toward others. Not just to see them, but we move inwardly and do something in the capacity you've given me to reach out to them. Thank you so much. In Jesus' name. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.